In the Gregg Lab at the University of Utah, we study epigenetic effects at the allele and cellular levels in the brain. Our new research flips the conventional model of brain genetics on its head. Most genes in our brain have two copies, one inherited from our mother and one from our father. Scientists have generally thought that most cells express maternal and paternal alleles similarly. But it turns out that things are not that simple for many genes. Some neurons choose your mom's gene, others choose your dad's. Whose gene would you choose? I love my mom, but I still choose my dad's genes. We wanted to learn more about how genes express their maternal and paternal alleles in the brain. To do this, we came up with a new screening approach in which we measure allele expression in many genetically identical mice. We began with the conventional assumption that the maternal and paternal alleles for each gene are co-expressed. That is, they increase and decrease their level of expression in unison across samples. We wanted to find cases in which this co-expression does not happen to discover new gene expression effects in the brain that arise because paternal and maternal alleles are expressed differently. We first applied this screen to study allelic effects in different brain regions, tissue types, and at different ages in the mouse. What we found was pretty amazing. We unearthed a ton of different allelic effects. We found autosomal genes with negatively correlated alleles, meaning that when maternal allele expression goes up, paternal allele expression goes down. We also found hundreds of genes with very little correlation between their alleles, which we refer to as differential allele expression effects. Some effects are age-specific, brain region-specific, or tissue-specific, while others appear to be highly stable. Overall, our screen reveals a vast new landscape of gene expression effects in the brain that involve expressing maternal and paternal allele differently. One remarkable finding from the screen was that over 85% of genes in the neonatal brain exhibit differential allele expression effects. In the adult brain, these effects impact only about 10% of genes. Wow, mom and dad's genes are expressed really differently in the developing brain. One of the most important findings in our study shows how differential allele expression effects can influence the expression of heterozygous mutations at the cellular level in the brain. Mutations that cause mental illness are often heterozygous, meaning that only one allele is mutated. Our data show that when a heterozygous mutation occurs, some brain cells will express both the mutated and healthy copies of the gene, like we previously thought. These are biallelic cells. However, as a consequence of differential allele expression effects, some brain cells will choose to express the mutated copy, and others will choose the healthy copy. Based on our findings, we hypothesized that cells that preferentially express mutated alleles in the brain may contribute to mental illness. So we further developed our screening approach to find out if these differential allele expression effects also exist in monkeys and humans, and whether they impact genes linked to mental illness. The short answer is yes, they do. We identified genes impacted by these effects that are linked to Huntington's disease, autism, schizophrenia, and other forms of mental illness. This research opens up a lot of new and exciting questions. What are the mechanisms that regulate the different allelic effects we uncovered? How do these effects influence brain development, function, behavior, and disease risk? Do they change in response to disease processes, stress, or drug exposure? We believe that by learning more about the epigenetic allelic effects we uncovered in the brain, we will gain a deeper understanding of the causes of mental illness and potentially uncover new strategies for treatment.